In the late 17th century, a small village in Massachusetts became the center of a hysteria that would leave its mark on history forever. Imagine a time when the fear of the unknown was palpable, where unexplained events sparked an inferno of suspicion and dread. This was Salem, a Puritan village in the throes of the late 1600s. The year was 1692. The mood? Tense and uncertain. Misfortune had befallen the village, with unexplained illnesses plaguing the community. The cause? Unknown. The solution? Non-existent. And in this vacuum of understanding, fear festered and grew. In the absence of answers, the villagers turned to their deep-seated beliefs, their religion, their superstitions, and thus, the whispers began. Witchcraft, they said. Witches, they feared. And from this seed of suspicion sprung a wildfire of hysteria that would consume the village and its people. The accusations were swift and relentless. Neighbor turned against neighbor, friend against friend. The courtroom became a battleground of fear and fanaticism, the gavel a harbinger of judgment. In the flickering candlelight, faces once familiar were now cast in ominous shadows of accusation. This wildfire of fear and suspicion swept through the village, ensnaring over 200 individuals in its fiery grasp. Over 20 were sentenced to death, their innocence disregarded, their pleas for mercy unheeded. Imagine the terror, the despair, a woman, a man, a child standing accused, their fate hanging in the balance, the prison cell cold and unforgiving, the gallows, a grim silhouette against the horizon, the noose, a chilling reminder of the hysteria's deadly toll. But what led to this frenzy of accusations, and who were the people caught in the crossfire of fear and fanaticism, you may ask? These are the questions that we will seek to answer as we delve deeper into the harrowing tale of Salem where innocence was put on trial. Welcome to Salem, where innocence was put on trial, and the fear of witchcraft led to a series of events that remain a dark testament to the dangers of paranoia and injustice. The year is 1692. Unexplained illnesses and misfortunes have struck the Puritan community of Salem Village. An eerie silence hangs in the air, broken only by hushed whispers of concern and fear. The villagers, once a close-knit community, now cast suspicious glances at each other, their trust strained by the inexplicable events unfolding around them. Children, once full of laughter and life, lay sick in their beds. Their parents, helpless and terrified, look on with worry etched deeply into their faces. Desperation and confusion reign, as traditional remedies prove futile against the mysterious ailments. In the midst of this uncertainty, a chilling accusation is made, the word witchcraft is uttered, and a spark of suspicion is ignited. This spark, fueled by fear and superstition, quickly becomes a raging inferno. In the dimly lit courtroom, a woman stands accused. Her face is a mask of anxiety, as she faces the stern gazes of her accusers. The room is thick with tension, every eye fixated on the woman at the center of the room. The gavel hits the block symbolizing the start of a series of trials that would shake Salem Village to its core. One by one, more accusations follow. Friends turn against friends, families against families. The fear of witchcraft permeates the village, turning it into a place of paranoia and dread. As the accusations multiply, so too do the arrests. Men, women and even children are thrown into stark, foreboding prison cells, their pleas of innocence falling on deaf ears. Amidst a climate of fear and superstition, accusations of witchcraft begin to fly, igniting a wildfire of hysteria that would lead to the imprisonment of over 200 individuals and the death of 20 innocent souls. The spark of accusation had turned into a devastating conflagration, consuming the very fabric of the community and leaving behind a legacy that would echo through the centuries. But what led to this frenzy of accusations and who were the people caught in the crossfire of fear and fanaticism? Let's step back in time to the late 17th century. The Puritan community of Salem Village was a tight-knit society, bound by a shared belief in God, the devil, and the supernatural. Witchcraft was not only real, but a grave sin and a serious crime. In this context, an accusation of witchcraft was a loaded gun, and it didn't take much to pull the trigger. The first to face the charge were three women of Salem Village, Sarah Good, 
Sarah Osborne, and Tituba, a slave from Barbados. They were outsiders in one way or another, easy targets for the community's suspicion and fear. Accused by a group of young girls suffering from mysterious fits and visions, these women found themselves at the center of a fast-spreading panic. As the accusations flew, the trials began. The courtroom was a place of high drama, with spectral evidence, testimonies about dreams and visions, accepted as proof of guilt, the accused were subjected to intense interrogations, their every word scrutinized for signs of guilt. Some, like Tituba, confessed to witchcraft, perhaps believing it was their only chance of survival. Others, like Sarah Good, maintained their innocence to the end. But the trials were not just about the accused, they were also about the accusers. The young girls whose fits and visions sparked the hysteria became central figures in the proceedings. Their dramatic displays of affliction, their accusations, their testimonies, these played a pivotal role in the trials. And then there were the judges and juries, men of high standing in the community, who were tasked with deciding the fate of their fellow villagers. The trials unfolded like a tragic play, with each act escalating the tension, the fear, and the body count. People from all walks of life were accused, from beggars and slaves to prosperous landowners and church members. Families were torn apart, friendships were shattered, and the community was divided. The fear of witchcraft had turned neighbor against neighbor, friend against friend. As the trials continued, over 200 individuals found themselves imprisoned on charges of witchcraft. Twenty of them were executed, hanged on Gallows Hill, their lives cut short by a rope and a fall. Each trial, each accusation, each execution was a blow to the fabric of the community, a testament to the destructive power of fear and suspicion. But what led to this frenzy of accusations? And who were the people caught in the crossfire of fear and fanaticism? Join us as we delve into the stories of those accused, the accusers, and the trials that tested the very fabric of a community. The Salem Witch Trials serve as a cautionary tale of how fear and suspicion can destroy communities and lives. It's a chilling reminder of how quickly reason can be abandoned in the face of fear. In the thick of paranoia, the citizens of Salem Village turned against their own, casting aspersions and accusations with abandon. The echoes of those actions still reverberate today, a haunting refrain of the consequence of unchecked fear. As we reflect on the trials, it's vital to understand the role that superstition and ignorance played in fueling the hysteria. The residents of Salem Village were not inherently evil or malicious. They were people, just like us, who fell victim to their fears and prejudices. It's a stark reminder that even the best of us can falter when blinded by fear. We also cannot overlook the part that societal pressures played in this grim chapter of history. The puritanical society of the time was rigid and unforgiving, with an unswerving belief in the supernatural. This, coupled with the fear of the unknown, proved a potent cocktail that led to the mass hysteria. But it's not all doom and gloom. The Salem Witch Trials also serve as an important lesson in the power of critical thinking and compassion. It's a testament to the significant role these qualities play in upholding justice. The trials teach us that in the face of unfounded accusations, it's critical thinking that can pierce the veil of hysteria and reveal the truth. Moreover, they underscore the importance of compassion. Compassion prompts us to question, to seek understanding and to empathize. It's a powerful antidote to fear and suspicion and a balm to the wounds of injustice. In the end, the Salem Witch Trials are not just a chapter of history to be remembered, they're a lesson to be learned. They're a stark reminder of the power of fear, the importance of critical thinking, and the healing power of compassion. They remind us of the importance of justice, critical thinking, and compassion in the face of unfounded accusations and hysteria. As we look back on Salem, we are reminded of the importance of remembering the past to ensure such injustices are never repeated. The village, once a stage for fear and suspicion, now stands serene under the morning sun. The fog of hysteria has long since lifted, replaced by the clarity of hindsight and the wisdom of lessons learned. The trials of Salem serve as a stark reminder of how quickly a community can unravel when gripped by paranoia and bias. 
They underscore the value of critical thinking and the necessity of fair judgment in the face of unfounded accusations. These trials remain etched in our collective memory, a dark testament to the dangers of unchecked fear. Innocence was put on trial in Salem. Today we honor those who fell victim to this hysteria. Their stories are solemn call to vigilance and justice. In the light of a new day, we reflect on the lessons of Salem, a poignant reminder to safeguard our future from the shadows of the past.